Blog Talk Radio. You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Are you, you're able to hear me. This is Reverend Ray. Amen. On When Christians Speak Talk Radio, of course, today's broadcast is our three real life, real men, real talk. Amen. Brother Tony, Brother Ray, Brother Elston, Brother Cleopas Malone, and Brother Tyrone should be with us in a short. I'm not sure who I have on the line with me. I, okay, who's on the line with me? Hey, Brother Ray, this is uh, Tony Mitchell. Okay, Brother Tony, how you doing? It looks like I got uh, Brother Elston. Are you with us too? Uh, brother, Cleo. brother Cleopas, and how you, how you fellas doing? Uh, we're doing well. Uh, brother Tyrone, is that you, man? Oh yeah, this is me, uh, Brother Tyrone. Okay, all right. Good we afternoon, fellas. Everybody. Right. Good afternoon. Hey, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I think, we also, I, I think I also have uh you also have uh the other brother on with us. I think he I think he's calling in too. Yeah, brother Floyd, we see him. All right. Yeah, um so we wanna welcome everybody to when Christian Speak Talk radio. This is our three real life, real men, real talk. Amen. And uh, we got quite a few brothers joining with us. We're still waiting for didn't hear from Brother Austin, so hopefully he'll be with us. We do have a um, extra brother on the day, um, and that's Brother uh, Floyd Rose. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you. So we're going to go ahead and get started today. Um, we're excited about the, some of the topics we're going to talk about. We're going to basically just turn everything over to Brother Tony, but I do want to quickly do the quick announcement. The announcements, so just bear with me. Uh, when Christmas We Talk Radio broadcast, uh, the broadcast that we have coming up is Sister Brown and Grace with Minister Vanessa Williams. That's every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Declaring the French Work with Reverend Pat Randall is Thursday at 12 noon. Uh, Friday Night Joy with Friends, Amen with Reverend Ray. That's every Friday at 7 p.m. Uh, the Brand of Life with Reverend Ray is the first and the third Sundays of the month. Amen. At 7 p.m., Challenge to Change with Pastor Paul Morgan is every Wednesday, amen, at 7 p.m. Monthly broadcasts are as follows. Lifeline with Apostle Shirley Jones is every first Monday at 7 p.m. The Bold and the Beautiful with Reverend Novena Reed, Reverend Curtis Austin, and Minister Jordana Cunningham is every second Saturday at 10 a.m. Adoration with Evangelist Lewis McElwain is every third Monday of the month. Amen. At 7 p.m., marriage takeover with the, with the body of one with, with Pastor Eric and t- Pastor Tamika Thompson is every fourth Sunday at 7 p.m. And of course, today is our three real life, real men, real talk with Ray Rose, Elston Green, Cleo Chris Malone, Tyrone Rose, and Eternal Yo uh, Mitchell. Amen. And don't forget, of course, our midday glory prayer with Reverend Gwen Dixon. Amen. It's every Wednesday. Amen. At uh, 1 p.m., this is a free conference call. Uh, the telephone number is 712-770-5505. The access code is 732-499. Amen. So I do want to encourage you to go and check out our website. There's a little bit more information about what it is that we do. Amen. And I'm excited about this group of brothers being with me today. I do have some other announcements that's coming up. Amen. On uh, next Sunday, April the 18th, uh, the Better Life will be hosting a, a topic called The Journey to Better 
Days with Veronica Burnett and um, guest Cindy. I know I'm not gonna mess her name up, man. And uh, brother Tony, you can correct me <laughs> if I'm wrong. <laughs> it's Anita Mitchell. Amen. She'll both be with us um, on tomorrow, on next Sunday at 7 p.m. And um, these ladies will be talking about um, um, dealing with grief, depression, trauma getting counselor, all different things. So I want to make sure you tune in for that particular day. Amen. So with that being said, and all the answers being given, what we're going to do at this point, we're going to give everything um, to Brother Tony, and he's going to take it from here and whatever the Lord sees this to do. Amen, Brother Tony. Amen. Uh, thank you, Brother Rose, uh, for giving me this opportunity uh, today. Uh, 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 okay, Brother Tony, Brother Tony, wait just give me one minute. Okay, I hear some um, music in the background. You, okay, yeah, you got to mute that. Thank you. Not right. me. No, but <laughs> I know. I, mean, I know who it was. Yeah, they dropped the call in the way. Probably a right. Dallas. So go ahead. No, actually, oh, was, actually, oh. actually, it was a Redskins fan. Oh, so I was uh, watching football team. Uh, actually, 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 Elsie was a Redskins fan that did it. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, brother Tony. Go ahead, man. I had to... <laughs> no, no, it's it's all good. It's all good. So, um, thank you once again for this opportunity to kind of lead the. Uh, facilitate the conversation on today. So uh, today's topic is I want to focus on friendship and what it means to be a real true friend um, on today. So uh, just in case you're not familiar with uh, DMX, uh, DMX was a hip-hop artist. Um, I can remember when I was 18 years old, I actually purchased his first album, and I've been a fan of his ever since then. But most recently, uh, DMX, whose real name is Earl Simmons, uh, tragically passed away uh, this uh, earlier this week after suffering a heart attack. We don't know the full circumstances of why, uh, what caused him to have the heart attack. Some say it was a drug overdose. Some say he actually took the Pfizer or one of the vaccines for COVID-19, which led to him uh, having the heart attack. But we don't know the details. But... Uh, one of the things in everyone paying tribute to him and everyone sharing their stories about DMX, uh, one interview where he was doing an interview, he spoke about one friend when he was 14 years old. He was uh, smoking a joint with this friend, and this friend, and I say this in quotation marks, uh, put crack cocaine in that joint. And from that moment on, it caused Earl Simmons to have a lifelong uh, battle with drug addiction from that very moment. And this was someone that he said was a very close friend of his. And then it made me really think about to a moment in time in 2019 where just a moment of transparency uh, I was having severe marital issues um, during that whole entire 2019 year. And it got to a breaking point where I reached out to three uh, guys that I consider to be real good friends in the faith, not only in the faith, but just real good friends and brothers in general. Um, I've helped them. Uh, the reason I reached out to these three particular men is because they themselves either went through uh, the same issues that I was going with or they went through the actual divorce but were able to remarry uh, to someone else. And I knew that these three, who I consider my brothers, would be able to uh, give me the same guidance and energy that I poured into them, and they'll be able to reciprocate that to me. And when I text them, I said, brothers, I'm at a breaking point. I need help. I need some encouragement. Please, if you have a moment, just feel free to reach out to me. One of the brothers actually texted me back and said, I'll be praying for you, my brother. And that was it. The next one didn't follow back up with me to two days later. And that conversation was just, hey, hey, I just wanted to see if you're okay. You guys going to make it through. And then one guy actually did call me on that same day, and he just basically said, oh, you guys, right. you 
you guys are not really going through nothing too serious, so uh, you'll be okay. And at that moment, and even today, it makes me realize or makes me think about who are my true friends in my circle. What is the definition of a true friend? And do I have anyone if, God forbid, an emergency was to come up? Who in my contact listing would I be able to call that I know would be there for me in my moment of need? So we're going to talk about and we're going to discuss what is true friendship, uh, how do we see ourselves as being a true friend, and then most importantly, how do we help our friends in the time of need? And two scriptures came to mind uh, in regard to this particular topic. And Proverbs twenty-seven seventeen, which says, As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. And then one verse that I know we're all familiar with is John fifteen thirteen, which says, Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life. For his friends. So, in that regard, I'm going to throw out the first question, and this is open for dialogue, is what is the definition of a friend? How do you see or uh, an image, or how do you portray a person to be a true friend in the sense of not just from a Christian brother as a friend, but uh, actual a true ride or die I got your back kind of friend that you know will be there for you in the good times and also in the bad times. So I'm going to turn it over to the guys and whoever wants to address the question first, uh, feel free to do so. Oh, boy. (laughs) I guess. Well, if nobody else wants to go, I mean, I'll, 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 go, I'll go first. I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there is. Listen, I, if, if, if someone else wants to go first, I'll gladly. Go <laughs> ahead, man. You act like a chief right now. Thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> um, what is the definition of a friend? <clears throat> um, confidant. Uh someone that's trustworthy, someone that uh, knows things about you that a lot, most don't, most no one else knows about you, uh, someone that's not judgmental of you but will look you in the eye and tell you the truth about yourself, um, someone that uh, if you call that person at uh, 2 o'clock in the morning, uh they're gonna rise up out of bed and they're gonna come and and try to assist you in any way you can, any way they can. And last thing I'll say of a true friend, a true friend is is, is someone that uh, that you can dump, <laughs> that you can just you know bear your soul to, and you can tell them everything there is to know about you and your situation you're going through, and you know that when that conversation is over, you'll never hear it again unless you bring it up. Amen. 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 That's good. That's good. That's good. So, I was kind of thinking more so, you said friend, thinking of, and I was, I was going to cheat and look up the word dictionary for the word friend. But um, <clears throat> I was going to say that, thinking about the Bible, how it says how um, a friend would lay down his life, or a person would lay down his life for his friend. Like he would literally die for his friend. And I think about the friendship between Jonathan and David and how how Jonathan would was even forsaken his father, King Saul, um, because of the love that he had for David. And every time I think about friend, that's where I always reflect back to Jonathan and David. Um and even even though Saul was 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 uh, was ill mannered towards David, and um, that did not carry on to Saul. Saul, I mean to um, Jonathan. Jonathan had his own opinion and respected David and loved him and knew 
um, the anointing that he had on his life to be a king. And um, even after um, his death, David still cared for his children, or at least one of his sons, who was um, who was crippled, was born crippled. I believe he was born crippled, or was caused to be crippled by an accident or whatever. But but that carried on even after his death. The friendship and the love that he had for Jonathan uh, it carried on. So it was a mutual thing. It's a mutual thing. So um, yeah, for for him for lay down your his life. For someone, it may not just have to be a physical death, but it could be just, um, um, like Cleopas said, you know, you call me middle of the night, I'm there. You know, when you die to yourself, to your own um, comfort zone, uh, whether you're sleeping, whether you're eating, um, you're just tired, don't feel like it, and your friend calls you and and says, I need to talk, and you stop what you're doing. Um, sometimes even saying, look, man, um, okay, I'm with my family. Give me a second. Let me let them know what's up, where you're able to tell your your family, you know, hey, I, I need to take this call. This is um, this is my man calling me, my boy calling me, my buddy, my homie calling me. He, he needs to talk. Um, and so that's how I, I, when I think about friendship, when you say what's the definition of friendship, May not have been an accurate definition, but I always think about the love and the and the friendship and the respect that Jonathan and David have for each other. Amen. 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 Yeah, I would go ahead, brother. Oh, now you can go ahead. Right? Give me a little more time to think. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, I, I. Um, as your brother was talking for myself, I would consider a friend that when you're in the the uh, foxhole with someone, uh, that you know that if you thought you, you take your sleep back in the days when the and it was in the service, one person was sleep and one person would stay on guard. So, and I know that's probably not really deep because that person would not be a friend, but that's the type of person I want with me. They got my back. Is basically what I'm saying. They got me back, my 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 back, uh, um, no matter what, and everything. That's gonna do their part, and I'll do my part, and then to making sure that they they covered, um, especially if it's through prayer, and um, and especially if it's just just being there, you know. And uh, one of the things I think Cleopas said in the beginning, just someone that you just can talk with. They don't be trying to judge you or nothing like that. But listen, but they would be brutally honest with you at the same time. So uh, I like that idea uh, as a friend. And um, I think some, a friend also is one that has to be trustworthy, okay? They definitely have to be trustworthy. They have to be able to uh, trust you, and you have to be able to trust me. It's not a one-way type of thing, Okay. It's not a one-way controlling, um, do it my way, nothing, nothing like that. But it's I can trust you, you know. I can trust you with with, with confidence, and I also can trust you uh, with just being around you that you will do it <laughs> to endanger me or uh, or cause conflict because I'm hanging out with you. Okay, uh, that's what a friend means to me, and everything. And I know that they, that word. Uh, Brother Tony has has changed so much over the last few years, and uh, it, it, it has so many other different meanings or tones to it, and everything. But some of the meanings and tones that they have to it, it's not friendship. You know, um, it's based off of uh, uh, um, covering me. You know, or being guilty, or being in control, or you know those type of things. You know. But friendship, man, is a I mean, I like Elston when he's here's the boss about David and um Jonathan, you know. Um I know there was other friends, but they'll stick out the most because of uh what took took place. That that Jonathan was willing to hide David to uh to 
give David hints, or let David know what the, what his father was thinking, you know, because he knew that his father wanted to to kill him, so kill David. So I mean that kind of thing, man. That's what I'm looking at, brother Ty. Go ahead. Yep, that's a Dallas fan. Yep. <laughs> can, I, can I say something? Can, can I say okay. something? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can yep. hear you there, man. <laughs> okay, good. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, a friend, a friend is, to me, a close friend or a real friend is someone that goes beyond the call of duty uh, when it comes down to just holding uh, promises within you and that person. Uh he not only holds promises together uh, with you and that particular friend, but he also covers you. And, you know, I have friends that not only covers me and hold promises, but when we talk, they give me their opinion. And uh, they, become, they become more of a friend or more of a, uh, a closer friend because they open up to me. They don't withhold information that could be valuable to me, they give it to me straight and I give it to them straight. And so we understand each other. We feel each other in a way that we can relate to each other, talk to each other. That's a friend to me. Uh, not only when I'm hurting, but he, he or she, we pray together. And so when I can have a friend that I can talk to about my problem and then we come together and pray together about the situation, and then we get results or answers from the Lord in prayer, a true friend to me, because now we're not telling every or anybody what we've talked about, but what we went to God with in prayer, and God answers it. And that's my friend. That's my friend that I can call. I was reading in the scriptures. You can call any time of the night. If you're hungry, he can come out and feed you or whatever you need. It's not telling everybody about uh what's going on with you or why is it going on with you. That's what I think of, uh, 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 the definition of a friend is to me. Uh, one that prays together, that can talk with me, that can hold what we talk to, talk about together, and we not get offended with each other, but we tell it just like it is. That's what it is to me. Amen. Can I interject something, Roy? Oh, yes, go ahead. Yeah, Tony, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Yes, okay, this is Floyd. Um, this is a very interesting conversation here regarding the, the term or the word friend. Um, um, friend goes beyond, well, friendship goes beyond um, looking at my faults. You know, they meet my needs and stuff. Um, but a friend can be also a female, you know, um, um, a, a male and a female. They could be really close friends to you. Um, now, on the other side of the coin, do we want to be friendship with the world and stuff? There's a lot of good people out there that 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 are um, good to us, but they're not saved. Do we want to, you know, separate, do we want to sever that relationship because they're not Christians and stuff like that? Or do we want to keep that relationship and hopefully because of our lifestyle, they can become a Christian, thus becoming a closer friend. You know, so um, friendship is, to me, friendship is without um, boundaries and borders and stuff. You know, if you take care of me, if you help me, and I help you, and I go out in every aspect of my life to help you, and you do the same for me, we have built a friendship. Friendship starts with trust. Um and and trust starts with knowing one another, a relationship. Um can my enemy um can my neighbor be a friend? I think he can. Um, um can my enemy be my friend? Well I think because of Christ inside of me, the enemy um I can because of Christ inside of me, um, I can, you know, not myself, but Christ can turn that that person to become my friend and stuff. So, like I said, you know, like earlier I said, 
friendship goes beyond boundaries. Um, it has no limitation. The only limitation I think we have as far as establishing friendship is us. You know, Christ, you know, he he identified 12 men. He called her 12 men, and those 12 men became his friend. You know, so, you know, Christ is calling us out, you know, to make a difference, to draw the world, to draw that person that we, we was back in sin, to draw that person out of sin to come to Christ. And that person will be a closer friend to us. Amen. Sorry. Amen. 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 Uh, you brought us that provides a real good definition of what a true friend is. And I guess I, I need to provide my own definition of what a friend is. Uh, I, I'll consider a person, and you're right, Floyd, it could be uh, a male or a female. Uh, I consider a person a friend when not only are they uh, able to love you despite yourself and the mistakes you make and still support you, but they also hold you accountable as well. Um, yes, some of the closest friends that I have have been the ones that have pulled me on the side, not publicly, not in front of everyone, but pulled me in private and said, Tony, you know, you messing up in this area, or Tony, you need to tighten up in this particular aspect of your life. And those individuals I have way more respect for because they have called me out in love and told me in correction in that love and moment that I needed to make an adjustment. And uh, it's, it helped me out tremendously. So a friend is able to support you through all of the good and celebra- celebratory times that you have, but also it, when there's a time for correction or there's a time to uh, actually address some things with you, they're not afraid to do so because they love you and they support you and they really want to see the best for you. Uh, so that's kind of my definition of a friend. So uh, kind of the segue into this, uh, Proverbs seventeen seventeen says, A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. So Brother Floyd actually kind of led to this next question of, okay, some of the friends that I know for a fact are real good, true friends, uh, some of them actually – are uh, believers in the faith, and they're brothers in that aspect. And I also have some brothers uh, that don't believe, or they're not, uh, as you say, the the regular people that attend church or talk about the Bible or things like that. So they're kind of out there, but I call them tweeners. So they're kind of in between. They're in the world, but then they also know that they – have to give their life to God. So um, in that aspect, dealing with the tweeners, those friends, uh, how do you still maintain the close friendship? Because I find it being a delicate balance. Uh, When I meet with those friends, we have a good time. We, we, I don't bring up God or I don't bring up, Hey, you need to give your life to Jesus Christ. (laughs) If they, bring up the conversation first. Or if they ask me a particular thing about the Bible, then I see that as an opportunity to share uh, wherever it is that the Holy Spirit places upon my heart. Uh, But there might be some people out there that might struggle in this area. So what advice would you give to a person who has a friend that isn't a true believer, yet how do you... uh, still communicate or provide some kind of way in which that you can help that friend to eventually give their life to Jesus Christ. So I'll turn that over to you guys. Well, well that's that's a good question. Um, first, let me say that those, um, those tweeners, as you call them, believe it or not, they make the best friends. <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they make the best friends. They are, you know, it's sad to say, but sometimes the tweeners are better than your, your, your church friends, your church-going friends. Um, right, uh, right. Because yeah. they 
they, they understand about ride and die. They they say you my ride and die dog, and I'm gonna stick with you because they that's that's what they know to do. Um, I I would say this though, um, and I and I I have some good friends of mine who are are I would say um, they are believers, but they haven't made that commitment. And so what I what I did was to one of them, I just said, hey, listen. I said, hey, you know, we boys, whatever, whatever. I'm going to put this out here. I'm, I'm going to say this because I don't want you to say that you wasn't told. Right. I said, I wouldn't right. say that. I, I don't want you, if God forbid, that you stand before God and you say, well, Elsa didn't tell me. Right. I right. said, I say I prefer you say when we in heaven, man. Thank you, thank right. you, thank you, man. Right. I I appreciate you um, let me know what's up, man. Give me a heads up about this. So I said, so I told him, I said, hey, you know, listen, if um, this is what's 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 up, this is what's up, and it's up to you. And I said, and I tell you what, I won't bring this up ever again unless you ask me. I said, because right. I'm respect- your stance, just like you respect me, I respect you. So here's the deal, right. and then you take it for what it's worth. You still my dog. If you want to talk about it, you want to pray about it. I said I still love you. I still care about you. Da 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 da. And um, and then you just leave it alone like that. Um, I'm in a situation now. It's funny that you brought that up because I have a real good friend of mine, and um, he left the faith. He was a pastor. And um, he was a believer, was brought up in the church, became a pastor. And just when the last two years ago, he just, he left the faith. He he dropped a bomb on me last summer. He just said, you know, um, the Bible ain't what it is. You know, the white man wrote it, da 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 the whole nine yards. And I uh, listened right. to him, and I listened to everything he said. And I didn't say nothing because I couldn't figure out what to say because he was so gone. And so in my spirit, I thought about him last week. And and I was thinking about him, and I said, you know what? I said, I'm just going to go tell him what's up and leave it alone. He shared his, right. shared his philosophy with me, and I listened to him. I respectfully listened to everything he said. I mean, he talked to me for an hour where he was. So now I'm going to say, when I see him again, I'm going to say, look, bro, I think you're making a big mistake. Matter of fact, I know you're making a big mistake. Um, I pray that God will give you some revelation that you will see the true light before you leave this earth. That's what I said I was going to tell him because I want him to know or that, when, like I said, that he, when he stands before God, that he says somebody warned him. Right. Because right. Right. if we don't, and God forbid, one of our best friends or whoever that we know, and we see them in heaven and, and stand for God, and they turn and look at look at us and say, "Why you say nothing? Why you tell me? Right. All these, right? You you never told me that. You never told me about this. Right? Whether they receive God or not, at least you gave them a warning and gave them a heads up." And to me, that Amen. would be a friend. Oh, so, hey, this is what's up. Don't say I didn't tell you. And I ain't going to bring this up again. But if you want to talk about it, haul at me. If you don't want to talk about it no more, if you ever want to talk about it again, I will respect you, I respect you and I respect our friendship, and I will okay. say nothing. About it. Thank you. Oh, good. Yeah. Hey, uh, can I, can I, may I interject another thought? Um on verbatim what you was talking about um the the word said um the word says in a paraphrasing it um no no one can come to the father except the spirit that draws him well either that person that that person that's out there in the world he's our friend or he's not our friend, but if we have God's spirit within us either that person is going to be compelled to come to us because God is drawing him or because or that person is going to stay in his situation, although 
the word has been spoken to him, he's going to stay in that situation until God really works on his heart and for that person to come. So I think as an individual, as a Christian, we have to be available, you know, to be, we we have to be available to God and, and with God so that, you know, if, if our unsaved friends are out there, they can see that light in us and they can see that joy in us and want to come, you know, and want to be part of us or part of the joy that we have inside of us. Thus, converting, you know, that person from darkness into light and stuff, you know, um, because you see, the word said we are children of the light. We're, we, we, we are God's children and stuff. So, if that person who's in darkness see that light we have gained, and he comes to that light, we have gained a brother and we have gained a friendship. But if that person is still in darkness, although, you know, we're committed, not, not more so committed to him, he's he's acquainted with us, you know, I believe it's God, it would take God to bring that person out of darkness to let him see, hey, this is the better way, not, maybe not through me, but maybe through a really close friend of yours. So my, my stance on is, my stance is, I'm not going to excommunicate you. You know, I'm not going to hold back from you. I'm going to love you always, friend, although you're in your sin and stuff. I'm still going to love you. And because I'm I'm loving you, I'm hoping that, my love for you, it could be a male or female, can compel you to come to Christ. Thus, we become brothers in Christ. Amen. Amen. Sorry. Amen. Um, Amen. <laughs> that, 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 that's a very good question, Tony. You know, how do you deal with it? People that may be in the world that uh, that are friends, you know, one, one of the things I did a few years ago, is I, I started to department with people, and we used the word friend. Let me just let me speak. I used I was using the word friend, and I was using it very loosely. Everybody was my friend, with it when in fact everybody I was friendly toward, or they were friendly toward me. We didn't have right. any hangups. We really wasn't friends because, you know, we didn't talk <clears throat> outside of work or outside of whatever gathering we were in. Sometimes it's even in the, in the church. <clears throat> I have partners are, that are in the church that, that man, we we together, we laugh, chop it up, do all that. But when we go when we go outside of those four walls, you know, I we don't really talk, you know, so... I stopped calling everybody my friend. Right. And, you know, because truth be told, everybody's not you. And we, you know, for me, I, my, I just try to live a lifestyle before people, whether right. they're in the, in the body of Christ, out of the body of Christ. You know, and there's some people that got one foot in and one foot out. You know, uh, on Sunday they shouting. And speaking in tongues, and I'm not. This is no knock on anybody, because I was that dude too, you know. Yeah. And then on Monday, it cuts mm-hmm. you up one side and down the other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and again, no knock, but everybody's not your friend, you know. And, and, and for me, a friend again is, you know, somebody that I genuinely care about. They genuinely care about me. You know, we don't mind, you know, bearing our mm-hmm. souls to one another. And I think, I, I don't know who it was, but somebody mentioned the word accountability. You know, we're accountable. I can remember a brother coming up to me, uh, he was a deacon in, in the ministry, and he came to me. He said, man, you know, the Spirit of God told me that you're supposed to be my accountability partner. I said, okay. And we didn't really hang out like that, and we didn't really talk like that. And he said that, and, and I don't know, a year or two went past, and I remember telling my wife, that guy right there is my best friend. And it, it, it formed a relationship between us because it was God born. 
You know, he came to me and asked me to be his accountability partner. He was having some challenges, you know, in his life with some things that, that, that was driving a wedge between him and his wife. And she has my number. And she can call me and tell me. Right. And, and she called me and tell him he's doing this, you know, and we would talk. And those are the kind of friends that I think that, you know, we should all aspire to be. But that came through what he saw or what the Spirit of God laid on him about me. And I just want to be that guy that somebody can point to or that that the Almighty God can say, that's the guy. You link up with him. Right. You know, because the truth, truth of the matter is, you know who we hang around. We gonna soon become like. You know if 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 I'm a if I'm a blood bought believer, and the only people I hang around is drug dealers and, and people that cheat on their wives and all that. At some point, somebody's gonna rub off on somebody. And if that's I right. got a circle of three or four or five friends, and that's what they're doing, people that I call my friends, and that's what they're doing. At some point, they are gonna rub off on me. And it's going, to, it's going to make it look, and see, that's what Satan does. Satan dresses that thing up to make it look like it's acceptable. And that's what Paul yes. was talking about in Galatians. He says, who has betwixt you? Who, 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 who's tricked you? Who fooled you to that's think, right. <laughs> think that's that there's another gospel other than the gospel of Jesus Christ? That's right. So that's my two cents on it. And, 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 and not, again, I'm not putting a knock on anybody, you know, it just that's that was something that that the spirit of the Lord laid on my heart, and I just stopped calling everybody. For me. You know, I got people that I work with, man, and and if you came to the dealership and you saw us hanging out, you think we were best of best of boys. And the truth of the matter is, when I leave that dealership, they don't talk to me, and and, and it's not out of we just don't we we don't have anything in common. Common, yeah. The Bible says this. The Bible says, "How can two Walk together, Walk together, except they agree. Except they agree. That's right. So <laughs> it um, actually, actually, uh, I think uh, my thing is when I think about uh, someone, I always think about that scripture. Well, I don't know what the scripture, but something that we always say that how we're being um, sought, light, and power, um, and even in that type of situation. Uh, um, I agree with Alston. There's some people that's outside the world that you uh, <laughs> they like ride and die, so to so to speak, and um, and you try to keep that in perspective, keep that part of that stuff that you don't agree separate. But in the meantime, you know your life, uh, the way you live, is a testimony unto them. Amen. And they're watching you. That's the test, test. How we live our life. That's a testimony. Amen. Yeah. Other thing I was, I, I about was um, am I my brother's keeper? That scripture with uh, yeah. Abe yes, told, we are. But Jane told, um, told God. He said, am I my brother's keeper? And everything. Not knowing the words that he said had so much power and everything. Amen. You know, and uh, we are definitely. Uh, Responsible. I, I I I forgot the word that Tony used earlier. That the, I I need to be held accountable. I think it was the word kind of accountability. Yeah. You know, for each other, you know. So that when I see my brother weak, then I can strengthen him. Jesus told told Peter that I believe it was Peter. Said so when you see Peter, um, you are the rock. But now I want you when you when you're strong, strengthen your brother. Okay. Mm-hmm. In order for someone to be uh, uh, classified as a brother, there has to be a closeness to it. And it's not necessarily about blood, brother, but there has to be a closeness, a uniqueness that I know you and you know me and everything like that, that I can trust you as a brother and I can believe in you as a brother. So when you're, so when you're strong, don't forget about your brother, strengthen your brother, you know. And um, that's our lifestyle. That's our testimony. Um, that's everything there is about about us. And again, I go back to what I said earlier. Then I'm turning back. I don't know who else. I think Brother Tyrone has left. Um, that that word friend is tossed around very loosely nowadays. And not everybody is our friend. And we got to recognize that people, you know, have different motives and different things that they want to do. 
and they're not necessarily our friend. They can be an acquaintance, but they're not necessarily our friend, you know, because when the chips are down, <laughs> can you count on them? You know, the questions being asked. Can Amen. you count them? All right. Amen. Yeah. Yep. I, saw, I'm, I'm, saw, I saw a quote, uh, and I apologize for jumping in, but I saw a quote, I forget where I saw it, and it said this. It said, not all snakes crawl on the ground. Some, some of them sit right across them. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, there 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 are people that that are not in the faith that are not that are not Christians, but they are friends. Uh, and I found them. You know, I, one of the brothers was speaking about. You know, they would they would even be a defender of you. I've had friends that are not in in, in church, but yet when they're around me. They defend me uh, for what I stand for, and not on that, they know what I stand for. So they'll put aside the things that they would do that will, uh, you know, sort of hurt the relationship as us being friends. Uh, in other words, if we're together, they know I don't smoke, they don't smoke. If they know I don't do this, they don't do it. If a conversation come up about things that we don't do, they won't do. They'll be a defender of me as well as I'll be a defender of him. Now, when we come to the, uh, discussing the word or talking about the word or me offering them a plan of salvation, that's always. You always bring that up with him, but all the same time, he knows the way, he knows the way, but he chooses not to accept the way, but he yet still wants to be a part of our relationship, part of the friendship that we have. Although the Bible tells us that uh, being a friend of the world has no, has no friend with the Lord, with God, uh, enemy of God. But even with that thought being in mind, that friend can be a friend to you. And the Bible also speaks of us finding a friend uh, of, of the world. You never know who you're going to need. Uh, there's no use of me hating or harming or hurting him because it might be that one that's going to help me when I really need it. So with love and kindness, I'm going to always treat him with the highest respect, but yet give him the word, or yet give them the word, and be their friend. But when it comes down to the word of God or to the, to my life, it says follow peace with all men and holiness. Hey, man. So I'm going to draw a difference there. You know, I'll be your friend. I'll talk with you. I'll, we'll, we'll socialize together. But when it comes down to the word of God, I'm going to give you the word. And instead of arguing with that person or fighting with the person, I have to know the word that we're not going to argue the gospel, but we're going to, we're, we're, I give him the word, but he's still my friend. And we depart ways. We go, he, he go his way. I go my way. Uh, he understands when we come together again, it's the same story. You're my friend. But when it comes down to my salvation, when it comes down to the word of God, you know, I'm not going to, are given to what you're doing or what way you're acting. So there are friends that's out here uh, that you can call your friend, that I can call my friend, and they know what you stand for. But it's important to me to hold on to what I stand for and what I believe. Another scripture says, with love and kindness, eventually you can draw that person in. You can draw whether it be male or female, you can draw that friendly person in if you stand for what you know. Uh, so I think I think you can have a friend out there and still and still uh, have the Lord on your side. You know I think, but just don't put it, don't don't let it become between you and your God. That's what I think. Amen. You know. Amen. Amen. Um, we we um well, how many of us is on the tel- telephone right now? Is it, is it five of us or four? Um, it's probably well, about the, 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 seven. seven but, okay. By the way, my name oh. is Ray. Okay, so don't call me Roy. Okay, okay. <laughs> I knew okay. that was coming. <laughs> Ray. <laughs> so, oh, oh boy. <laughs> Sorry. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Tony, but, but okay. Hey, take it easy on the fellow, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is new to me here, you know. <laughs> but there's, there's seven men on this phone, correct? Each one of us came to Christ because someone shared with Christ to us, right? That person may be no longer in our lives now. They probably gone with the Lord and stuff. But all seven of us, we came to Christ because someone else told us about that person. Came, it could have been your mom. It could have been a friend in your past to introduce you to the Lord. So, I mean, we could have been in our sin, deep in our sin, doing anything and everything. But someone, somewhere, somehow, the Lord spoke to that person, and he, that person whispered in our ear and we got out and he got our attention and now this is where we're at now as Christians. So, you know, we're not looking at, you know, the people, you know, we can be a friend to the world as to say, let me introduce you to someone that can really take care of you. This person I can talk this person who I'm talking about is Jesus. Just like that person introduced us to Jesus, we as Christians who are friends to Christ because of what he did for us, we can introduce people, our friends, our ungodly friends, because at one time we was ungodly people. We was a people without a God, without salvation. But someone came to us, and we had an ear to listen. We, Someone became a friend to us. We can do the same thing to change the world. And so we can become a friend to someone to share. We can plant the seed like the farmer does, plant the seed and let God do the increase. In other words, what I'm saying is don't reject people that's that's not saved, but accept them. Don't accept their lifestyle, but accept them as a person because we don't want to accept us as a person and introduce Christ to us. We can do the same thing. We can become a friend to someone and change that person's life, like someone became a friend to us and changed our lives. I'm sorry. Amen. 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 That's, that's good because uh, uh, just like all the brothers said, some of my closest supporters and the ones that is definitely at a nail drop have my back are the ones that's out there uh, supposedly in the world yet. I've noticed that throughout our friendship throughout the years, they either stop doing certain things or they know that, hey, I can't say, for instance, I can't cuss while I'm around right. Tony. I got to be respectful. Right. Or, right. hey, I, I can't smoke. Or, hey, I can't drink like I do when Tony's around. So that mutual respect without me just calling them out on the stuff really just shows that, hey, they really respect me and they respect my opinions just as much as I respect them and respect their opinions. So it's, it's uh, to your point, you definitely have to have that balance of, hey, we're still going to be friends no matter what. You're going to be my boy. But I am going to let you know that you need to give your life to Christ when the opportunity comes up. And you can never Amen. say, I never told you, when, you know, you had every opportunity to get yourself right, you know. So I appreciate your brothers on that feedback. And one last question, I think this would take us to the end of the broadcast. Uh, Proverbs uh, 18.24 says, a man who has friends must himself be friendly, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. So yes. in that, uh yes. Real quickly, uh, going around, how can we show ourselves to be friendly towards uh, people that we consider friends or we know for a fact or our friends or our brothers or sisters in Christ? Uh, What is one thing that we can improve upon ourselves to make ourselves more of a friend to everyone that we have in contact with? So I'll turn it over to you guys and real quickly, one answer. Uh, to that question. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll say... And I'll, okay, go ahead. 
uh, I just said agape and honor, you know, the agape love of God, you know, to be in our hearts to put all time and and honor. So we we push the word honor and we call it respect, you know, to honor people. But it doesn't matter what walk of life or who they are or you know, what lifestyle they're living, we still we still show them agape and honor. And, and, and I think Brother Floyd said it earlier that the, the love of God is the spirit of God that would draw them, you know, and all God asks us to do is to, to be a willing vessel uh, to operate on his behalf and to show the love of God to all men. And to all, all men turn. All, man. Doesn't, doesn't matter what they're doing, you know. It's you know, it's it's about winning them to Christ. And, you know, again, I think Brother Floyd said it is one plant, and, one water, but God gives the increase. And it doesn't matter the color of your skin. Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely <laughs> not. Matter of fact, the only matter. people who recognize skin color is, is, is us. Does God don't recognize skin color? No, that's right. So if we look, if we forget the flesh that we're in, like Paul talks about, he said, walk in the spirit so you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. If we walk Amen. in the spirit, we, we, we're we not going to look at the color to win that person to Christ. We're going to look at the soul because it's that soul that's crying out to God. The flesh is rebelling, but that soul, the spirit man is, is calling out to God, and we have the answer. You know, we can reach out. We we can reach out to that person and help them, and thus become that friend to that person. Uh, I'm sorry. I mean, it, it, it's God in us bringing people. Forget about ourselves. Forget about our ambition. Forget about our, you know, what we want. He said, "I decrease, so that Christ may increase." I am. We are the sort. You know, we are the salt of the world. You know, it's not about us. Now. God don't care about the color of your skin. You know, <laughs> we see this in a lot of churches and stuff. You know, I, I'm here in Texas. There's a lot of prejudice here. But God doesn't, you know, I'm not going to make it to heaven because of the color of my skin. I'm going to make it to heaven because of grace. And I want my friend to come with me because of grace. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Sorry. I just got excited. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Tony. Oh. I'd have been a take off. <laughs> oh, man. For those that don't know, that's my twin brother, man. I love him like crazy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's my twin. I do that. <laughs> you, who's that? I didn't know you had a twin, so that I just learned something today. Yep, yeah, that's my twin brother. You know, he loves to talk. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. He said some good things. So, I told him, I, I'm sorry, yeah. man. I, I'm not trying to take over again. But let me go ahead and say my little piece and everything, because I know you gave us a time limit. You know, like a one word. No, no, thing. no, no. It's, it's your yeah. show. It's your show. So you do what you gotta do. No, 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 no
that we we call we don't call him Buck. We call him um, Brother Cleo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, y'all, you're getting off top. I'll learn all the nicknames. Yeah, I well, know, right? Well, <laughs> well ma- Mama said, Mama said, hi, Roy, hi, Dang. Hi, Ray. <laughs> 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 it is. <laughs> Mama, Mama done spoke. <laughs> 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 Hey, 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 Tony and Rick, do I have time to tell a quick story about my about my favorite Aunt Lucy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go I ahead. I promise it'll be quick. So my favorite Aunt Lucy, she's coming to buy a car from me. She always calls me by my nickname. That's, that's all she ever called. I don't think I've ever heard her call me Cleo. And nobody <laughs> at the dealership knows that I have a nickname. I'm sure they know I do, but they, they don't know what it is. And she come up to the dealership. She said, I'm looking for Buck. <laughs> and they're like, who is that? <laughs> so on that day, everybody found out what my nickname was. But I love my aunt. Boy, I love her. Lost. <laughs> <laughs> she gave everybody my nickname. <laughs> hey, praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. Love, praise the Lord. God is good. Hello, yes, mother. God is good. Yes, he is. Yes, yes he, is. he is. Well, Ray, I, that's all that I got. Um, um, <laughs> and I appreciate you, brother. I, I don't know nicknames and two brothers and everything. Yeah, no, no, it's all good. It's names, all good. you learn nicknames and new names. <laughs> that's new right. Names. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Elson, are you still with us? You on? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, so you up next. I don't, dude, I don't, I don't have anything. To be honest with you, man. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I don't have anything else. No, no, no. I'm talking about next month. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, I thought you talking about something else to say. I said, oh, I said, now nah, I'm good. But, okay. Oh. All right. All right. Cool. We're yeah. gonna have um, maybe it's called uh, what's your name? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> what's your real name? <laughs> Uh, that's, that's funny, bro. But I know, after, I know you got a nickname. You ain't never tell nobody, but I'm sure you got a nickname, man. So yeah. Okay. I don't have no nickname, that. man. I don't have no nickname, Roy. My... I can tell you this. I can tell you this. If we hang around long enough, we're gonna find out what it is. We're gonna come out. I don't have no nickname. Yeah, sure, yeah. Come on, man. It's whatever they call me. That's what I go with. L. Oh, okay. Oh, they're going to call you late for dinner, right? L Boogie, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I get it all. So so I don't have no really no nickname. Uh, okay. Yeah. Roy. Hey, hey, see, Roy. See? 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 <laughs> don't go there. Let it, let, let it go, man. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> and my other brother's name is Tyrone. <laughs> they didn't know that, Tyrone. bro. You see? Just oh. same time, it's fine. They knew that, man. <laughs> yeah. Tyrone. <laughs> hey, 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 by the way, um, Elston and, and Cleophis, guess what? He's a Redskin fan, so y'all got him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hey man, and I, I, think that, I think that I think that even I think that even the odds is three and three. <laughs> <laughs> and that's even the odds. He's a Redskins fan. He is. Uh, well, yeah. I mean that's I'm, I'm not a Redskins fan. I'm a Washington fan. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I forgot to change it. <laughs> oh, <already>. oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to, like, look, tomatoes, hey, tomatoes, tomatoes. It's better to be a it's better to be a cowgirls fan. I'm just saying. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> Really oh, no problem saying that, but he said he got, he got a red skin fan. He's a dead skin fan. <laughs> Woo! That's fine. Time. Woo! Got to go. Dinner's ready. <laughs> I guess I guess we ain't friends no more. <laughs> <laughs> for, oh, <well. laughs> for those that for those that are listening, 
all you know um, have signed in and listened online, and we just like we're just men. Real, that's what this time about. Real life, real men, real talk. <laughs> this is, this is, we just keep it real. We just keep it real. So we went to talk to oh, talking about God. friendship. to talking about dead skins. I mean, uh, the Washington football team. <laughs> oh, you had to get that final shot in, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I did. Hey, yeah, yeah we right. love them despite their faults. So yeah, that's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. The cowgirls. Yeah. Girls. Yeah, and, and they got to be a brothers too. We kind of count those souls as brothers too. You know, no matter how we feel, we look at them like, okay, it's okay. I'm still, we still yeah. here. We still your brother. You know, we still I'm love you. Good. You know, no matter what. So it's all good. It's all good and stuff like that. But uh, man, okay, Tony. This, uh, 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 um, so, uh, Tony only gave us a half hour. No, wait a minute. It's eight o'clock. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's eight o'clock. It's after eight. It's after eight. I'm sorry, man. Wow. It's eight o five. Eight o five. I think when I did the broadcast, I set it up for an hour and a half because I thought Tony would go a little longer. It's just a <laughs> game. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just being careful. But um, hey, man. hey, guys, thank you again for being a part of this. Thank you, Brother Floyd. You know that and put all my business out there. Thank you for that, man. No problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, thank you for that. Oh, you, I'm going to get you for that, okay? But um, yeah. but um, yeah, but um, guys, this is a great conversation talking about friendship and camaraderie and just um, realizing what is what is a friend, you know. And for those that are listening or maybe listening later on in the uh, different platforms. Uh, keep those things in mind. You know, not everybody, one of the things that was said, not everybody is your friend, okay? Not everybody is your friend. Again, I do want to remind you next Sunday, amen, on the Bread of Life, I will have with me um, Sister Zanita Mitchell and Veronica Burnett, and we're going to talk about a, little different, a lot of different things uh, concerning what's going on now. You know, there's many um, things that's happening right now and with us in, uh, in the world and uh, with the Konoa virus. So we can talk about dealing with grief, loss, uh, how to get help, where to get help, those kind of things. So I want you to tune in um, next um, Sunday for that at 7 p.m. Amen. Also, I'm excited for this. Amen. This is some great news. We have a new ministry get ready to start up in, in April. No, I'm sorry, in May. Okay. And it's, it is geared towards singles. Those that are still single or uh, become singles, and um, the name of the ministry is called um, Matters of the Heart Singles Ministry. I'm working with a young lady. Uh, we're gonna be doing this together, and we're on in April, May the, t- the 21st, I believe that's the date that we'll start. Amen. So we've been looking excited. We're going to basically um, have a broadcast, a podcast about dealing with singles. Um, we're going to talk about pretty much an open forum on um, as, as believers, how should we should be taking care of ourselves and avoiding pitfalls and temptation and what to do. Uh, we probably will make, bring some of these guys on that are married <laughs> and their spouse to, to give us some pointers and everything I don't know yet. So y'all both stay alert because I think I'm the only one on here that's single. So we stay alert so we might have to bring you on and talk about some different things. So um, I'm, I'm excited about Brother uh, I mean, Sister Maggie, Pastor Maggie, all right, uh, Wilson, um, she'll be assisting us with this. And I'm also looking forward to anybody else that wants to assist us with it, too. We also started a Facebook page <clears throat> um, already, so we'll have that up and running. But, um, again, brothers, I, th- I thank you for tuning Those t- Thank you, all of you, for tuning in to us. Have a blessed and wonderful day. We didn't pray in, and it's never there, but <laughs> so we're going to hey, make an announcement real quick. Real quick. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. All right. So, uh, as you uh, guys might know, I have a nonprofit organization with my wife, Sunita, uh, Anaya's Project, and our mission is to help families dealing with pregnancy and infant loss or dealing with fertility challenges. We have our first event on Saturday, April 24th, uh, 6 p.m., a night of poetry. So this is going to be a real fun experience. We're going to have several poets from the DMV area that's going to participate. We're going to have a raffle. We're going to have a contest, all kind of different things. Uh, Again, that's Saturday, April 24th from 6 to 8 p.m. To find out more information about it, uh, please visit our Facebook page, Anaya's Project, Inc., 
or you can also check us out on Instagram at Anaya's Project, or you can go to Eventbrite and type in Bitly. Uh, and hold on, let me get that information. You can get uh, go to Bitly and type in Night of Poetry in all caps. So uh, feel free to participate, uh, make wherever donation you can. Uh, that's available. There's no limit to what you can do. I know these brothers on here are loaded, so hopefully they'll make a donation <laughs> as well. <laughs> so I uh, just wanted to put that out there. Yeah, send, send, me, the link. send me the link, Tammy, <laughs> so we can post it, yeah. okay? All right, send us the link. All right, anybody yeah, else I got will. an announcement? Go ahead. All right, anyone else? Because, I mean, uh, we don't really uh, – but I do want to let uh, those know that – we have uh, we do have a couple of pastors in the midst of us and everything, and maybe you're in the Richmond area or up in um, in Maryland area. Um, if they want to give you the name of their church, that kind of stuff, or how they can get in contact with them, we can do that also. Brother um, Elston, real quick. Sure. My um, the name of the ministry that I'm pastor of is um, the Believers Sanctuary. And um, right now we're still doing Zoom uh, at 11 o'clock every Sunday. So if you want to go to my website, you can get the link to the Zoom broadcast. Again, we're at 11 o'clock on Sundays on Zoom. The, uh, the website is called TheBelieversSanctuary.com, The Believers Sanctuary. Um, Believers, S, um, and then S for Sanctuary. So it's two S's in between the believers and the sanctuary. Again, that's more every Sunday, eleven o'clock. We we'll, we we'll love to have you. Okay, brother Tyrone. Amen. Yeah, we um we're doing Zoom as well. We're uh, doing Zoom on uh, Zoom on Wednesday nights and on Sundays. Sundays at one o'clock. Uh, you can go to our church page, uh, Mount Pleasant. Across the Faith Church and see the, uh, the Zoom number to get on Zoom. Come on, uh, be in service with us on Sunday mornings at well, Sunday afternoons at one o'clock, and then on Wednesday nights we have the uh, Just Pray and God will do the rest broadcast that comes on at uh, seven thirty on Wednesday nights. And uh, you you're welcome. Any of you brothers are welcome to come on and pray. We just pray for every anybody uh, during that hour and a half of prayer. Uh, and you also can find uh, the Zoom number for that on our uh, Facebook church page, Mount Pleasant Pentecostal Faith Church. And okay. Brother, Brother Cleo. Uh, which, uh, our, our ministry uh, uh, is and I am under the, uh, the Honorable Apostle Michael A. Freeman at Spirit of Faith Christian Center. We're still doing Zoom. Um, and, uh, we have some Powerful services, uh, marriage made easy. We have Wednesday Bible study at noon with uh, Pastor Freeman, and then again we have uh, evening Bible study at 7 p.m. on uh, Facebook Live, Zoom, YouTube. Uh, you know, it's uh, awesome ministry and awesome man of God that has a heart for God. Okay, brother Tony, did you? I know you gave me what you got coming up. Do you have anything else? Are you still with me? Yeah, I'll stay with you. I'll stay with oh, you. Okay, so okay. I, I could just share the church that uh, that we're at. Uh, we're at the Sanctuary Kingdom Square, which is right off of Crane Highway. Uh, we serve under Bishop-elect Anthony G. Macklin. Uh, we, we're we still doing uh, Zoom and live feeds from our website. So right. uh, those services are at 9 o'clock every Sunday. And you can check us out. Uh, org, which is the same Kingdom Square. Amen. Or you can check us out on our Facebook page as well. Amen. 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 Anything else, brothers? Or otherwise, we're done. We're finished. May the Lord add a... Uh, God, I cannot remember that scripture. What's that scripture, Ty? <laughs> Close it. Did you use? Tyrone. I'm sorry. I'm oh, what's sorry. that? What's that? What's, okay, what's that closing scripture you use, man? Go ahead, give me that closing scripture that you use when you close. One that comes top of my head is, "May the Lord watch between me and thee, while we're absent one from the other, 
Let the whole church say amen. 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 All right, brothers, y'all take care. Thanks again for tuning in. Uh, well, this is an outstanding conversation. Looking forward, brother, I'll see you yeah. next month. Amen. So God bless. <laughs> Again, everyone, you've been listening to When Christians Speak Talk Radio. This has been our three real life, real men, real talk with Brother Ray, Brother Tony, Brother Austin, Brother Cleophas, and Tyrone. And then a guest, of course, we had my, my twin brother, Brother Floyd Rose. Amen. That uh, put my other name out there, but it's okay. I still love him. But y'all, <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to y'all later, man. Y'all be blessed. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Too. All right, guys. All right. Take care, brothers. All right, bye.